Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to our first episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage Season 5. Welcome to 2017, everybody. Let's hit the ground running, shall we? Alright, so this season we have a whole bunch of things to do and so many exciting things on the horizon. I cannot wait to broach all those subjects with you guys. But for today, I wanted to show you a neat new tool that I discovered, and I wanted to share with you because it is pretty awesome, especially for, if you're like me, you build a lot of things from reference. So here is a uh, katana. It's kind of an oversized extended katana that I created recently. And uh, in creating this, I needed to get a lot of reference for the exact curvature, the exact distance, you know, some of the different shapes involved. So how do you manage your references? Well, typically what I would do is I would be using the inbuilt Windows uh, picture viewer and, you know, have a bunch of pi pictures in a folder and just kind of cycle through them. You have to cycle back and forth and it's kind of messy. So I found a fantastic tool and this tool is called Quadro and I will show you how it works. So down here I'm going to click and say Quadro, right click, and I'm going to add some images. So I'm going to add a local image. So I'm going to do that and if I go to my Katana folder here, so you can see that I have some reference images. So I'm going to load this one, this one, I'm going to load this one. Oops, let's just pick a few <laughs> instead of all of them. Uh, so I pick the ones that I want, all of those, and say open. And now what it's going to do is it's going to open them on the screen, but you'll see each of these are in their own little box, and I can actually move all these around. And within these images, I can actually zoom in, move the reference, so if I want just the handle, there we go, I've got that. And then I can move this guy around, I can say let me zoom in on this detail here, get that nice and big, and then I can even resize these. So I can say, you know what, I only really want to focus on right now just this little part in here. So let's just do that and move this. And these windows are fully customizable. I can move them to my other two monitors here. And you can even right click and say, I want to change the opacity. I want to put it to be always on top. That's really cool if you lower the opacity and then put it as always on top. Then you can put it directly into your scene and match the the distance and just model directly to it. But it's not something that's stuck in your background image. If you have trouble displaying those things or if you want to have a different reference image in the background, you can have all of those going at the same time. And I can also rotate. So this became very handy with this sword. So I wanted to make sure that I was looking at the, uh, the design on this blade is very specific. So I can move the image around. I can zoom in. And I can make sure that I can see what I'm looking for and kind of on the fly sort of crop out what I don't need. And so I was able to do something like this. Let me just keep that going. There we go. So now I can look at the details I want. I can focus on the sword. I can even flip it. So I flip it horizontally. And this is actually what I used in movies off screen. This is what I used for the actual katana itself uh, when I was referencing these. I used this this way so that I could look at this and say, okay, how does this, I actually had it on the other monitor so that it wasn't keep doing that, but uh, to get this design in here, I modeled that into here, and if I set this to always on top, where are you at? Always on top, there you go. Now I can model and move around and look at the model, and let's turn on the wireframing so you can see this design in here. So there's the three notches, one, two, three, extended it a bit, down and turned the curve, and then down into there. And so I was able to follow this design, and you can see here I can keep it on the screen, I can move it around, but then I can still work with Maya and still have my reference. So this is a fantastic piece of software, and on top of all of this, I can go in here to Quadro, and I can save this as, and what you're going to save it as is a reference file. So in my Katana folder here, let's call this catref, okay? So I can save that. There you go. Preset saved. Now down here, if I close this, should be able to close everything, or maybe it's here. Come on. Close preset, there we go. And then I can load a preset, so open, choose my cat ref, open, and it launches all the same images, and if you notice, they're still launched in exactly the same way. So this was referenced into here, it was zoomed in, my ones off screen remained off screen. So fantastic piece of software, and I will be referencing the, uh, the website for you, the link, and the author, I don't have it on hand, I apologize, but it's a fantastic piece of software and I have been using it nonstop since I found it because it is so handy to be able to have on-screen reference at all times and it's modular. You don't have to have one thing that you have to keep getting back and forth for. I have all of my images exactly where I want them and I can even change them out, rearrange them on the screen, set up a whole setup and just save it. 
really great. And the best part is it's free. You can't beat that. So, again, I apologize. I don't have the, uh, the author on hand, but it will be definitely notated in the comments and in the, uh, in the description. There will be a link to it. I highly recommend you check it out. So, as always, guys, welcome to 2017. If you're new to the pilgrimage, welcome. We are going to be doing so much cool stuff this year. You have no idea. It is bursting at the seams. And so to begin, let's make sure we have some great tools to kick us off to the right foot. And as always, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.